I'm Cheryl Brunette and today I want to show you one of my favorite ways to work in yarn ends. I call it the spider web technique. It's especially good for non-feltable fibers like um, cotton, bamboo, silk, linen, cellulose fibers, and also synthetics like acrylic, things that you can't felt. Um, I happen to be using alpaca today for demonstration, but it's because I wanted to use this particular method with this particular project. So let's get started. If I'm knitting something that has pieces that are seen together, I usually start and end the skeins of yarn at the very edge of the pieces so that I can work them into the seams later. I've already shown you how to do this, but that doesn't work for a project like this cute cowboy cowl. It was a very fun knit, and part of that fun was in making this decorative edge, which has decreases and slipped stitches. It's really very, a very pretty little thing. Let me go in and give you a better shot. There you go. Isn't that a cute little thing? I love it. It was knit from the top down. That's why the loops are going in that direction. And notice they're even twisted. It's fun. I'll, I'll put a, um, this is not my pattern, and I will put a link to the pattern below. Um, but, and I probably, could, I might have been able to take the yarn all the way to the edge and then figure out a way to put, to weave it together so that it looked good, but it would have been very tedious and I actually don't, I'm not sure that I could have been able to do it. So instead, I ended and started new balls of yarn in the body of the piece. Now, um, you can see, I, I put little pins, the turquoise ones, these are the ends. These are the ends that I had to work in. For such a small piece, I had a heck of a lot of ends to work in. And that is, this is one we're going to work on today. That's because I think that this is an old alpaca yarn. Um, it's It's been in my stash for about 30 years. It's left over from a sweater project. And I'm pretty sure it was one of the first alpaca yarns that was imported commercially from Peru and that they were just starting out. I'm guessing that they've solved this issue by now of having all these knots. And despite the knots, it's a great yarn. It's beautiful, it's silky, it's soft, it's warm. And ordinarily, I would do a spit splice here, or more gracefully known as a felted splice. However, I mean, and I would have been able to do it, but I had to use two yarns. It wasn't quite thick enough. This is the, let me move that out of the way. This is a sport weight yarn, and it called for something a little bit heavier than that. And so to get into the range, I mean, it's a cowl, it doesn't have to be perfect, but to get into the range, I used this tiny little lace weight yarn. It's between like a lace and a sock weight. And this is the one that had all the knots in it. And as I was working with the two of them together, I just wasn't confident that when I did my spit splice, that I would make it exactly in the right place so that these two yarns would be the right length always. That I didn't want any bubbles of these yarns because it's already kind of a <laughs> messy ball of yarn, right? Um, so I didn't want to take that chance. So I said, okay, well, I'll just work in these yarn ends. And this also points out why it's good to have an oddball collection of skills because you come up with a problem and you are able to sh troubleshoot it and fix it yourself. So um, speaking of which, I'm sure that you've probably noticed by now that there's a big wet spot here. And that was one of my opportunities that happened today. Um, and I, I'm, I am going to point this out to you because I want to I want you to understand that even for the experts, things go awry and you just work around it. I wanted to spruce this up a little bit before I showed you the technique by shooting, I haven't blocked it all the way yet and I haven't quite finished it. I wanted to shoot some steam at it and I don't iron that much, A. B, this is the Pacific Northwest and things rust that you don't even know can rust. And when I shot the steam on the front of this, 
gob no, notice I'm just like choking, gobs of rusty water flew out. In fact, I have a script here and you can see little droplets of, well, I don't know if you can, probably not, but they're little droplets of the, of the rusty water. So first of all, I, my first thing was, oh no. And my second thing was, okay, I blotted it real quickly with a paper towel. And then I went over to the sink and wetted it as much as possible. And as soon as I'm done shooting this, I'm going to take it home and soak it in um, a the the laundry detergent that or the laundry soap that well it's a detergent I guess I'll come up with something that um, I'll wash it with and see if I can get that out it's very faint now and this is for a dear dear friend so I want it to be pretty darn perfect at least I don't want it to have rust spots on it so my first solution is I'll try to wash it so that they come out and I'm hoping that happens. My second solution, which I had to think of because if that didn't work, I was going to be really sad, um, is that she loves red. And I have two friends who are expert fiber dyers. They do wool and silk. And so I will go to them and beg them to please dye it a smoky red. Smoky is her name, not the color of red. Okay, so sorry for that diversion, but I did think it was valuable to point it out to you. So let's see what we've got over on this side. I left these ends, these are already worked in, and I left these long so that you could see the path that I took. Ooh, there it is. Now I told you this was the spider web method, but I actually didn't use the spider web. Let me get this out of the way. What I did was I split the larger one, notice I, have, I had two ends, right? And it was a four ply yarn. You could split it into each one into four plies, in which case you would have four and four or eight of these little guys to work in. I split it into two plies and two plies and then the other piece into two plies and two plies. And this, it was fine enough that I could still work it in. And the yarn, the two were right about there and I just started working out. I worked, I barely caught the pearl bumps. And then I went up and I came down the next one. So I took them off into four different directions. Now the advantage of this is that they are very likely to pop, or unlikely, excuse me, to pop out because your knitting stretches this way more than it stretches this way. There's a little bit of give that way, but um, they are so thin and they are worked in so carefully that they are m most unlikely to pop out. So you can see why this would be really useful for cotton or silk. And in this case, this alpaca is quite a silky fiber. It has no give in it like a wool would. It just is straight. And it, um, I always think of alpaca as a cross between silk and wool when I'm working with it, even though it's an animal fiber. It just has that silkiness, the longer hairs. It doesn't, it doesn't want to fuzz up as much as most wools, at least the, the ones that I've worked with. And here are the ones up top. I went, oh, that might have been there. There's where I worked one. So you can see the pattern that I'm following. Um, here I had to do one up here. Again, you can see that I did that. Now, I called it a spider web method because you could, in fact, go off in this direction, make everyone go in a different direction, like a spider web. But I just chose not to do it. This is my preferred pattern, though I have done the f spider web before. So let's actually watch me do it. Now, I went into my needle stash and I've shown you before that you choose the needles according to what you need them for. These, This one's pretty sharp. You want something that's going to pierce the back of those stitches, right? This is blunter. This is blunt. Um, but this one has a nice big eye, which I might have to use because of it's a little bit awkward when I'm doing it with um, from behind the camera. I can't put my nose right on it. So may, I'm going to try the middle one and see if that one works for me. I start by, and this is the back of the lace pattern, so I obviously I don't want to, you know, cross over that little eyelet. 
I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Let me take this off. This was just, this was just an indicator for me. I'm giving you much more sort of backstory today than I usually do of the production because I, um, I want you to know that I get opportunities too. <laughs> and you just roll with them. You just work with them. So I, I'm splitting the plies there. I have two and two. Let me go all the way down. Okay. And I'm just going to work with one of these. And beca because this is pretty solid, I could pr I'm probably going to take this one. I would take it down in this direction, come back up, go there. Let me show you. Let's just do that. Oh, I got it in. Again, I would be, I would turn my work, right? I'm working upside down here for, to me. So make it convenient for yourself. Oh, let me go over one more. So I'm right at the edge there. Pierce it so that those threads cannot be seen in the front. And you only have to go down four or five stitches. And then when you come back up, look at this is this will not be seen. I'm going to go. I, I'm picking up maybe three plies. It doesn't have to be consistent. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Mike pulled out my. See? Life is filled with opportunities. Many years ago, when I made my first knitting videos, 88. I came to a sort of a tedious part like this and I told a story about someone who um, was talking to a knitter and said, oh wow, knitting, that requires a lot of patience. And it was a man who um, responded and he said, knitting doesn't require patience, it teaches patience. And I've always loved that because I think patience is a virtue that serves us well. Okay, so I worked that one, two, three times. That will be plenty. And then when you snip it off, you can snip it off nice and tight or close, excuse me. That's And, it, and so when it does get pulled, it's just going to go into the other stitch. I would take this one and go up in this direction. And then sh 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 sh. I would split this guy and I would probably go off a little bit and, sh 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 sh. and up here too. And you could, as I said, I could just get wild and crazy and start there and just go diagonally. You can make your little designs. <laughs> there you have it. A simple and effective way to work in yarn ends so that they stay put. Thank you for stopping by and until I see you again, be brave and enjoy your knitting. Until I see you again, be brave and enjoy your knitting. So there you have it. A simple, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Take two, take three, take three, take three.